boys, we don't have UFC this weekend, but what we do have is this video of me going through every single weight class in the UFC and picking a BMF in every single weight class. A video I wanted to get out for UFC 300, but just never got around to doing so. So I'm going to do it right now. We're going to include the women division, but we're going to run through them very quickly. Women's straw weight division. Honestly, for all of these weight classes, there's not that many clear contenders. The only one I can really think of is going to be... Zhang Wei Li, the champion. I'm gonna try my hardest not to have too many champions on this list, but women's strawweight, it's hard to pick anyone else than Zhang Wei Li. Maybe if Tatiana Suarez can beat her in an upcoming title fight and have a dominant reign after that, we can have a conversation of Tatiana being the BMF of the strawweight division, but right now, Zhang Wei Li, really, there's no other contender for her. Let's move up into the women's flyweight division. This one, pretty self-explanatory valentina shevchenko she's not the champion anymore but she is probably one of the scariest fighters in any women's division people saying that she's actually a kyrgyzstan secret agent that's why she's so good with her firearm and that's why she was such a dominant champion and you know same thing with the strawweight division there's not that many like clear contenders i mean there's somewhat of an argument for nama nunes but i don't know she's fallen off as of recently alexa grasso i don't know i don't consider her much of a bmf i think Valentina is perfect for that BMF title in the women's flyweight division. But last up, bantamweight division, one of the weakest divisions in all of UFC. And you know, right now we have the champion Raquel Pennington, definitely not no BMF. Julia Pena, not a BMF. The only one that I could say being a BMF is going to be Kayla Harrison. Just entered to the UFC. She saved us from not having any more Holly Holm main event. So thank you, Kayla Harrison, for that. Plus, she has a somewhat exciting fight style. So out of this whole division, unless I'm missing someone, Kayla Harrison is the only one that can, I guess, qualify as a BMF. But let's keep moving on into the men's division. Flyweight division. There's a lot of killers in this division, but the only BMF in this division is Manel Cap going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Izzy, standing up against him. That press conference alone where he's talking shit to Izzy, talking shit to Kai Car France, that alone put him in the BMF standpoint. There's no one else really in this division that you can, you know, really say like, yeah, that's the BMF. Can't really say that to Kai Car France. Manel Cap just fathered him. Alex Prez, can't really say that to him. Brandon Moreno, the complete opposite of a BMF. Not in a bad way or anything. I really like Brandon Moreno, but he ain't no BMF. Brandon Royval, I mean, yes and no, but I think Manel Cap is more of a BMF. And I'm trying so hard not to put champions on this list, so we're going to take out Pantoja. But with that being said, let's keep moving on. Bantam weight division. This one, nothing but killers in this division. Let's be real. There could have been so many people that could be the BMF in this division. Now, Sean O'Malley, yeah, he could be a BMF in this division. I don't really want to use him because he's a champion. Marab Devalishvili, no, not really. Not his fight style, at least. That, like, doesn't make him into the BMF. Corey Sanhagen, same thing. He's too much of, like, a nice guy. Fun fight style, but no, I, I wouldn't consider him a BMF. Peter Yawn, on the other hand. I would consider that man a BMF. Crazy stone cold, but I'm going to throw a curveball here. Davison Figueredo. That's who I'm putting in this BMF position in bantamweight. Now, I know you could say Peter Yan. That's a BMF. Song Yudong. That could be the BMF. Jose Aldo, after his recent win, put him as a BMF. There's a lot of good BMF candidates here, but Davison Figueredo, looks wise, he looks like the BMF coming into a new division, a weight up putting a master class on Rob Font, then going in and defeating somewhat, I guess, of a legend in Cody Garbrandt. He's been looking good recently. Give him a few more fights in this division, and we'll be saying that this man might be the BMF of the Bantamweight division. I'm just calling it early. Peter Yan, you know, he says some things in an interview that I'm not too happy with. I want to make a full video about why I think Peter Yan will never touch championship gold ever again. A very telltale sign in the interview that I saw a good chunk back. I'm just waiting. Maybe I'll wait for when he has a, a fight announced or something. So then there's more eyes on a video like that. Because there is an interview of Peter Yan where he fully pretty much just said that he he doesn't care about being a champion anymore. And I don't, I don't like that whatsoever. That's not something I think a BMF would say or have the mentality of that. But let's keep moving on. Featherweight division. You know... 
This is going to be a huge cop out, but I need you guys to put it in the comments below in the featherweight and the lightweight division. Who's a BMF? Because in my opinion, both of them are held by Max Holloway. He's a BMF in both of these weight classes. Yes, is this a cop out? 100%. But you guys have to let me know in the comments below who would you put instead of him? A lot of stacked names in featherweight and in lightweight. So let me know in the comments below who would you put as BMF? in each of those divisions if we're not taking into consideration max holloway or we can just say you know max holloway won it at lightweight so he is a bmf at lightweight who is the bmf in featherweight let me know in the comments let's keep moving on welterweight division there are i guess a few contenders here but no one stands out as much as someone like shaf kakrakmanov a lot of these people that you would consider in the welterweight division haven't had the most stacked career, the biggest names on their resume, not that many big name fights. Shafkak does have a lot of those things that I just mentioned, but out of everyone there, who are you going to give it to? Leon Edwards? I wouldn't give it to Leon Edwards, let's be honest. Kamaru Usman, there was, I was, I was debating giving it to Kamaru Usman, I'm not going to lie, but coming off three back to back to back losses. Not the greatest look. Bilal Muhammad, best believe we're not giving it to Bilal Muhammad. Colby Covington, same thing. He's like on par with Bilal Muhammad in my opinion. Jack Della Maddalena, there's an argument there, but I think Shaq Cav is a little bit higher. Gilbert Burns, I mean, maybe. Ian Gary, hell no. Sean Brady, no. Wonder Boy, no. And we just get lower and lower and lower on the list. It's like there's no one really there. Kevin Holland, Kevin Holland's getting a little bit annoying to me. I'm not going to lie. This man needs to take his career a little bit more serious than we can have a discussion of him being a BMF. Because in my opinion, if you're a BMF, you have to take shit seriously. You have to come in here seriously and, and not being okay to lose a boring decision and not being willing to throw hands. So yeah, Shafkok Rachmanov, I'm putting him as a BMF in welterweight. Moving over to middleweight division. The same thing with welterweight. There's a... There is names that you could consider, but in my opinion, there's no one there other than Robert Whitaker who has the resume and the depth that he does. The fact that he fought Yoel Romero twice, he wanted that fight. Then he wanted, again, Paulo Costa, two of the scariest looking guys in middleweight, beat both of them. And the fact that he's taking on someone like Chimaev, using his number three ranking in the world against someone as number 10 in the rankings in the middleweight division, that's some BMF behavior right there. Bobby Knuckles 100% deserves to be the middleweight BMF. I don't know who else you would put instead of him. DDP, I don't think so. I mean, if you really want to, I guess Sean Strickland could be somewhat of a consideration only because of his talking and the outside cage noise. But in the octagon, he's not that much of a BMF. Izzy, no. Jared Cannonier, I don't think so. Even like that Izzy fight tainted so much of Jared Cannonier. He was very timid. It was terrible. Marvin Vittori, no. Brendan Allen, no. Paulo Costa, no. And then down there, it's like, no, you can't really consider any of these guys higher than Robert Whitaker and BMF status. But let's keep moving over. Light heavyweight division. Let's be realistic, guys. There's no reason to have Alex Pereira not the BMF in this division. Any weight class he goes into, he would be the BMF. His fight style, the aura he has around him. He is a perfect encompass of being a BMF. Wanting to turn around right after UFC 300 into 301 and fight one of the scariest guys in the division. A terrible matchup for him at least fight style wise in Ankalaev. He wanted to do that so bad. Broke his feet. He still wants to fight Magomed but Magomed's turning him down time and time and time again. So give me Alex Pereira BMF. He's probably the best BMF on this list outside of like a Max Holloway. But yeah let's move over to the heavyweight division. Again, I'm having a hard time with heavyweight too because what do we do? We put John Jones. I don't want to, I mean, before all this antics of not wanting to fight Tom Aspinall and just wanting to fight Stipe, yeah, you could, there's a conversation for John Jones to be the BMF. But after what he's been doing and saying time and time again that he doesn't want to fight Tom Aspinall, there's no way you can give John Jones the BMF after those words have came out of his mouth. Serial gone, obviously not going to be a BMF. I mean, there's a conversation for Sergei Pavlovich to be the BMF. Curtis Blades, I don't see it. Alexander Volkov, I don't see it. Stipe, I don't see it. I mean, there's... There's an argument for Stipe, to be honest, only wanting to go up against the hardest hitters, the scariest people in the division. There is a, you know what? Oh, I might change it to Stipe, looking back at it. Because think about it like this. Stipe, his last few fights, DC, losing to DC, wanting to come back and fight DC again, wanting to fight him a third time to show who's the best heavyweight. Then, 
fighting Nanganu again, the scariest guy in the division. Not the first time, this is the second time he fought Nanganu. And now coming back after a layoff and wanting the goat of the sport, John Jones doesn't want a contender. He wants John Jones or he wants that rematch against Nagano. Obviously, the rematch isn't happening, so John Jones is here. I might, I might do it, guys. Stipe Miocic, I'm putting at the heavyweight BMF status. I completely changed my mind. I was going to have someone as a Tom Aspinall, but I'm changing my mind to Stipe. Let me know, is that a right choice or wrong? Would you guys put Tom Aspinall or someone else other than Stipe? Because in my opinion, Stipe Miocic, after what I just went over, after all of his... After his past few fights, that just screams like BMF behavior. So let me know in the comments below, did I get this list right? Was there someone else who you think would be a BMF in each division? And let me know about featherweight because we completely skipped over featherweight. So let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. We're on the goal to get 500 subscribers. We just passed 300 not too long ago. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications so you never miss any of my newest videos. And yeah. There's really not that much else left to say except for I will see you guys in my next video.